Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and in today's video we get to finally showcase some footage of Bosk and the bounty hunters in the Sith Triumvirate raid as well as territory battles and let me just say this is where the bounty hunters are meant to play in. I've already made a few videos showcasing the bounty hunters against arena and territory war teams and that's not really where they shine and unfortunately they aren't meant to be for arena type events as the developers said a couple weeks ago. But in today's video, we're going to show how the Bounty Hunters make the Sith Trumpet Raid, especially Phase 2, a lot more manageable and you don't need characters like Jedi Training Ray or Death Trooper to make it work. So let's start our conversation on the Sith Raid because at this point, people are at least hoping that they can do well in the Sith Raid. And I can tell you, Bosk and the Bounty Hunters, they are a great plug and play faction in Phase 2 against Darth Sign. And without worrying about the mods too much or the strategy, just spray and bring, you can get about 1 to even 2 million damage in the heroic tier of the Sith Raid, depending on what your lineup is. And we're going to talk a bit more briefly on what I was doing in this gameplay here. I got three different runs in this video to kind of give us a general feel on how the bounty hunters are doing in the Sith Raid. And the first we're going to talk about is a Bosk led full bounty hunter team, which got us about 1 million damage. Later on, I decided to toss in Death Trooper in a Bosk led team to see if it would make much of a difference. And again, we got 1 million damage. And the biggest kicker is getting a Boba Fett leadership in a bounty hunter team and that got almost 2 million damage and I suspect with the right mods and the right strategy you could potentially get all these numbers to get even higher but long story short Boba Fett I'm thinking is probably going to be your best bet for phase 2 of the Sith raid. Let's first break down a Bosk lead with a full Bounty Hunter team. And the reason why we tried Bosk out first, besides the fact he's the brand new character, on paper his leadership sounds pretty good for a long-term durability in Phase 2 of the Sith Raid, mainly because you get plus 50% protection for all Bounty Hunters, you get plus 50% tenacity, and also you get plus 100% defense while at full health. And here's the really important part for the Bosk lead. Whenever an enemy suffers a debuff or resists a debuff, all Bounty Hunter allies recover 5% health and protection and this comes in quite in handy at times you might see a character at low health but when you throw Dengar's AoE ability or perhaps Boba Fett's AoE ability or someone's AoE ability that has a lot of debuffs attached to it you'll see that their health gets bumped up quite a lot as well as their protection and considering how often debuffs get resisted in this raid it's great to see that even in the situation a debuff gets resisted you're still gaining a bunch of health and protection benefits and the other reason why you might want to consider using a boss leadership is that first of all his contract is very easy to satisfy. You just gotta hit the weakest enemy 10 times. And as you'll see in both of the boss runs, we start off by trying to knock out the Sith Assassin right away. And you can quickly trigger the contract for boss's leadership. And when you do trigger it, all Bounty Hunter allies are getting plus 50 speed for the rest of the battle and all those respected payouts that we talked about in a different video. And when it comes to the contracts attached to the leadership, Bosk is one of the better ones. And as we'll talk about later with Boba Fett's leadership, the contract that's attached to his leadership isn't all that great but his leadership seems to provide a lot more for the bounty hunters in phase two. So overall, wrapping thoughts on Bosk being the leader, one of the nice things about it is because of all that health and protection regeneration, you don't feel as pressured on making sure Bosk is taunting because most likely your bounty hunters that are running low on health, they'll regain their health and protection in one way or another. But later on, when we'll talk about the Boba Fett lead team that we have. You really want to make sure Bosk is taunting as much as possible because he gets a lot of health regeneration when he's taunting. He also recovers health and protection with his contract. He is a very durable tank that can last for quite a long time in the raid, so that is great to see because you need him really to make sure you're lasting throughout the battle as long as possible. We're going to talk about strategy in a moment with the bounty hunters because there's a couple cool synergy things as well as other little tidbits of information that you'll like to know about, but we're going to summarize the other two runs real quick with the next one being Death Trooper and a Bosk team. As you guys know, Death Trooper is one of the crucial characters so far for the Sith raid, and I wanted to see if Death Trooper was necessary to get a lot of damage out of this team. So I took out IG-88 because sometimes he felt like the weak link. And when putting Death Trooper in there, what we did is we first used Hunting Party to quickly take out the Sith Assassin. And then once you take out a minion, you get to use Death Mark from Death Trooper and you can apply it to Scion and do some big damage. Most likely when the time comes to finally use Death Trooper's Terminate to apply Death Mark on Scion, hopefully Bosk is already taunting, he has Frenzy, he gave everyone off 
offense up from his Predator Instincts ability. And the cool thing is, Terminate is a special ability, and while Boss has Frenzy, when you use Terminate, it should trigger Boss to go into a 100% turn meter, so you can quickly transition into Hunting Party, call all the Bounty Hunter allies to assist, and if you have Dengar, there's a chance he might call someone else to assist, such as Detriper to join in on the party, and you can do quite a lot of damage with Death Mark on Siam and pairing it up with Hunting Party. With and without Death Trooper under a Bosk-led team, I didn't feel too much of a difference. Obviously, with Death Trooper, I got a little bit more damage, but it's great to see that even without Death Trooper, a Bosk-led team can still get about 1 million damage. But now I want to talk about the leadership that made a huge difference, and that was Boba Fett. As I alluded to earlier, it's unfortunate that the contract attached to Boba Fett's leadership, Dead or Alive, isn't that significant because when you trigger Boba Fett's contract, you only get plus 25% tenacity for the rest of the battle. So it's not that significant, but the real significant thing is the plus 50% critical damage and the 10% critical chance that's given to all allies on the field. There's also a speed bonus under a Boba Fett lead. Bounty Hunters will get plus 15 speed for each debuffed enemy. And on top of that, although Boba Boss gets the plus 50% max protection at the beginning of the battle, Boba Fett gives max health equal to 50% of the total potency of all Bounty Hunter allies. So right there, you are getting a decent amount of survivability even without the boss leadership. Plus on top of all that, when a thermal detonator explodes, which at times we do see thermal detonators explode, all Bounty Hunters are getting plus 15% turn meters. So with the Boba Fett leadership, you're getting a lot of extra critical damage output, which pairs great with that bonus we talked at the beginning where you get plus 20% stacking critical damage when you're taking out enemies. Then we're getting the speed, we're getting the health bonus, and we're also getting turn meter bonuses. So all in all, Boba Fett seemed to be the better leadership to lead the Bounty Hunters into phase two because we got double the damage output on Scion, and that was quite significant. So overall, it seems that Boba Fett might be the better leader for phase two of the Sith Raid due to the fact there was such a huge drastic increase in damage when we switched out the leaders. But the main downside you will have to keep track of is making sure your characters do not die too quickly because as we saw with the boss lead, you're getting a lot of health and protection regeneration under a Boba Fett lead. That's not happening. So you really have to rely on Bosk surviving as long as possible and taking the punches and regenerating his own health so he can last throughout the battle so the others can do their jobs. So it's really cool to see that the bounty hunters are doing splendidly well in the Sith raid, not needing Jedi training raid, not needing death troopers. So they are a standalone great faction for the Sith Raid, and I just want to talk briefly about a couple little cute things I want you to be aware of when you're using the Bounty Hunters. No matter what leader you use for the Bounty Hunters, make sure you keep in mind what you need to do to trigger the contract attached to their leadership, and Bosk has the fastest contract in my opinion, as I mentioned earlier. You just quickly take out Sith Assassin, and you're good to go. With Boba Fett, it takes a little bit longer to get the contracts going, but whatever you do, make sure you take out those contracts as fast as possible so everyone's getting their bonuses early on in your run. All also, take out Sith Assassin as fast as possible because you don't want her to give turn meter to everyone and you don't want her hiding under stealth. And that's one reason why I kind of like the boss lead on paper because of the fact Sith Assassin is the weakest character and you want to take her out fast anyways. So right there, it's a two for one thing. But as we saw, Boba Fett is still the superior leader so far from all this testing. Two other things to point out. At times, you'll see in the gameplay, even when there's one character, we still are using AoE abilities, even though we have that concept of only using AoE abilities when there's more than one character on the field. However, when you have Dengar on the team, you want to use AoE abilities as often as possible because when you're using an AoE ability, Dengar, when he has his contract turned on, he has a 60% chance to assist off of that character that used an AoE ability, and if you know Dengar's basic, he has a chance to call in another ally to assist. So right there, when you use an AoE ability under Bounty Hunters, you're gonna possibly get three attacks right there. And bouncing off that previous point, one of the cool things is Soothe is considered a special ability as of now, and the great thing is, I like to try to soothe my characters before Darth Scion uses his AoE ability. So when Dengar is hiding under stealth and you're trying to cleanse everyone with the soothe ability, when Dengar has his payout, he has a 60% chance to assist off that Bounty Hunter ally that used a special. So right there, if you have to go and use soothe, it might not be a complete waste of an ability. If Dengar is under stealth, he has a chance to assist off that Bounty Hunter. So it's kind of great to see and great to point that out because that's something not a lot of people will notice at first. So although the Bounty 
Tanthers right now might not be too hot for Arena and some Territory War things. The great thing is, at least, this faction is very solid for the Sith Raid. No Death Trooper, no Jedi Training Raid, and we're still getting about 2-4% to damage just from me trying it out. And I'm sure if you toggle the mods right, as well as get a strategy down, you might get even more damage with the Bounty Hunters. So a lot of potential with the Bounty Hunters being one of the top factions for the Sith Raid. The last thing I want to talk about very, very briefly is Dark Side Territory Battles. Not the most exciting topic, but one thing that we were aware of for a while now is that the special missions for Bounty Hunters were kind of difficult, not impossible. It was possible with Zam Wessel and Greedo, so you could do it, but now it's so much easier with Bosk and the Bounty Hunter reworks. You can easily fly through those special missions and get all those lovely guild event currency for your guild. This is what the Bounty Hunters were made for. A couple weeks ago, the developer said on my channel during an interview that they are meant for PvE things, the Sith Raid, Dark Side Territory Battles, and not necessarily Arena. And as we see, this is what their purpose is. So you guys let me know down below, how do you feel about that? Are you happy that they're great for just the Sith Raid and you, and you don't care much about Arena? Love to hear your thoughts. And also, let's start talking more. I'm pretty sure we can get a lot more damage output with the Bounty Hunters. So let me know down below what you think might be the best lineup. And be sure to like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And as always... <laughs>